All right, you're good to go. <clears throat> Welcome to the EFIS, episode 26. I'm your host, Justin Ledger. As always, alongside Zach Hummel. Zach, I thought it was going to be a dead week. Didn't think we were going to have much to talk about. And then right on cue, we're a day late. We're recording this on Tuesday. So right on cue, thank God we're recording on a Tuesday. Because yesterday, last night, Bryce Harper charges the mound. Uh, Hunter Strickland drills him in the ass with a pitch. Biggest story of the week by far, not only in baseball, but probably in sports if you take away the whole Tiger Woods DUI thing. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the biggest story. What are your thoughts? Bryce Harper charging the mound, something that we've all wanted to see for a while now. Yeah, it's good that we got a day to let it marinate for all the hot takes to come out, um, especially Bill Plaschke had a hot take. Oh, my um, God, scorching hot. I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I love the takes that come out of sort of the baseball old rules. But, yeah, I was a noodle brain yesterday, so I was watching this, and I was like, oh, my God, like this yeah. is insane. I'm kind of glad we didn't record the podcast because it, I think it happened, you know, while we were – while we would be doing it or maybe even after. So yeah. uh, initial, initial takeaway is, you know, obviously Strickland did it on purpose. He can say whatever he wants. He obviously did it on purpose. And I don't think the Giants players, I mean, you could see it from Buster Posey that they didn't really agree with Strickland doing that. This was obviously his vendetta against Harper. And he took himself over the team there and pegged him. If, you, if, you, if he wants to fight Harper, you can go meet him in the parking lot after the game. Um, right. especially being a two zero game and you're putting a guy on base, tying runs coming to the plate. Not that the giants are going anywhere this season, but he, this is totally Hunter Strickland taking the team out of it and putting himself over that an old vendetta of Harper showing him up. And, uh, I think it was a 2014, 2014. Yeah. Harper yeah. had two bombs off of him, two bombs and, and just kind of cocked around the base pass and Strickland obviously didn't like it. So it was bound to happen. And it, it what was interesting to me is this is the first time they've faced each other since then, like three years, season, yeah. which is insane because they're in the same co uh, the, the same conference or national right. league, so they do play each other every year. So, Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. I couldn't agree with you more about Strickland. He, he comes off as the biggest douchebag out of all this, which is a tough thing to do when you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bryce Harper in the douchebag category. Strickland yeah. definitely, definitely takes the cake here. Uh, the, the th yeah, it's like you said – it's bad enough when you're hitting a guy that like you're retaliating because the guy was better than you. Basically he's retaliating because Harper hit two bombs. It goes back to what I always say. If you don't want the guy to go deep off you, if that makes you angry, if that makes you want to hit him, if that makes you hate him, then strike him out. And if, as if that's not bad enough that he's retaliating for that, it was three years ago. Maybe if it was like last postseason and like a, on a huge stage, you know what I mean? It's still in people's minds. Then I maybe I see it, but even then, it still makes you look pathetic. Three years ago, I forgot like all about Strickland versus Harper. I forgot all about that stuff. So very strange move by Strickland. Definitely put himself ahead of the team. <laughs> I think the biggest story, not the biggest story, but the funniest part of the entire thing was Buster Posey. He stole the show by just standing there and not doing anything. It was hilarious. Yeah, I guess the it came out today that sort of the the management told Posey to stay out of any fights that happen. It's like, how often do fights happen? So I don't even know if that's yeah. a big deal. But yeah, he just stood and kind of watched. And so did the umpire. Usually the umpire will get in the middle of the two, but he was just going to let the two go. I think it was right. one of those things like in hockey, they just know two guys don't like each other. They're just going to let each other go. And Aside from the baseball angle of it, you know, having the sports take, it was it was a hilarious fight. I mean, so funny. Every single part, every single part of it was just so was funny. funny. I mean, it was the open <laughs> hand punch that didn't even land. Harper throwing his helmet like ninety degrees away right. from Strickland. Michael Morris running in like a caveman and oh, knocking into his own teammate Samarja, yeah. who's pitching tonight, by the way. So yep. we'll see if anything lingers. I I think this was I. I don't. I don't think we'll see any fireworks tonight, just because some. Uh, just because this was between Strickland and Harper, but I would love to see another, you know, pitch go up and in and see what happens in this game tonight. You know, a fight. You know, a baseball brawl is good when people are talking about it for everything that happened that didn't include the punches that were being thrown. You had Buster Posey standing there as like he might as well have taken popcorn out of his back pocket and started eating it, watching. You had Buster Posey back there. You had. Harper throwing his helmet, like you just said, 
hair flowing everywhere, not just Harper. When you had Morse and Samarja in there, you had their hair flowing everywhere. Awesome scene there. But then you had Madison Bumgarner, who's hurt, in the dugout. He, I mean, he pops up, looks out like, oh, fight. Should I get involved, start yelling? And he's like, ah, oh, fuck it. And you just see him walk right down the steps. I mean, he's hurt. So good choice by him, but uh, really, really funny all around. Samarja colliding with Morse. I've seen that clip at least 30 times, and it's not getting old. I'll probably watch it another 30 times after we do this podcast. It's that funny. Yeah, my friend put it perfectly. It was just two meatheads that see yeah. each other, see their boys getting in a fight, whether it's in a parking lot or on the sports field, and they just run in without any aban- <laughs> any plan at all. They're just like, ooh, <laughs> run in and bang heads. I mean, that, like, that clip will go down in history. That was hilarious. Samarja was there lightning fast, like he's been waiting for this moment his entire life. Like, Samarja has never wanted to do anything more than just run and just – bang bodies like in the middle of the in the field with people he wasn't like involved at all in this situation but samarja was just the first one in and the first one to make contact with anybody it was hilarious yeah. and he's the probable starter for the next game and he literally has no regard for his own body yeah. <laughs> he's just swan dived in and there was a take today that i think is interesting michael morris obviously played for the Nationals, so some people are saying that he was the first one in to sort of try to break it up and protect harper and that Samarja would have tried to like crush the guy and some other giants who don't like him as well. So maybe Morris was trying to act as a protector. I don't know, but maybe. them bump- bumping into each other and then Jason Worth coming out with his <laughs> hat off. With hair. his hair too, yeah. yeah. There's just hair everywhere and no real punches. It's, it's like a pig pile in middle school. Yeah, so. and Jason Worth is a hothead too. I would have loved to see him more involved, but I guess I'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get here. Um, so the fallout of all of this is Bryce Harper suspended four games. Hunter Strickland suspended six games. Doesn't really seem like a very fair punishment when you take the two. I mean, Strickland, in all reality, is going to miss, what, three innings of play probably in that area. Harper, is four games is a lot for a position player. Um, you're missing Harper's bat in the lineup for four games when four games can separate you. Uh, from the second place team in a lot of cases. Luckily, the Nationals are that good without Harper still, where it shouldn't matter too, too much. I just think Strickland probably deserved more games and Harper less. Uh, at least that's my take. I don't know if you have a take on that. Yeah, I think I, th- I think they were both sound sort of suspension. You know, th- this tells me baseball kind of likes these fights. Like, they're not... Of course they do. Why wouldn't yeah. they? It's, it drives ratings. They're fun. They the social... I mean, via social media, that's the only thing we've saw, we've seen in the past three days, or past two days, is this. So I, I think Harper got four games because, I mean, Strickland, if you're going to hit some guy, he actually did it the right way. He put it on his ass. If right. you're going to hit a guy, not take his head. So I wasn't surprised by the six games there, but Harper having to charge the mound and throw his helmet and sort of start squaring up, I mean. Make I, a I scene, think, yeah. Yeah, I think four games actually, he got, he got well off in that. I thought it could have been more, but. Uh, we'll see uh, if he appeals it and if anything comes of that. Yeah, I mean, I think what it comes down to when you look at the suspensions is the Nationals are going to miss Harper for four games a lot more than the Giants are going to miss Hunter Strickland for six games. You know what I mean? They can they don't, they don't care about Strickland not being there for six games. It's whatever. Um, so that's that's the fallout from it, and I hope we see more come from this, but I doubt we will because, like you said, it seems like something that's strictly between Harper and Hunter Strickland. Um, looking on the American League, the best player in the American League, Mike Trout, hurt, uh, torn thug, thumb ligament, sucks. This story makes me just, like, pissed to look at because Mike Trout on pace for yet another MVP season, uh, leading – I'm pretty sure he was, he's leading the major leagues in war. He's – I mean – He's better and better every year. He's been the best player in baseball for since he's pretty much since he's coming into the league. And now he's hurt six to eight weeks. First time in his career that he's been on the DL. Uh, a little fun fact there. So you know it's serious because Trout's the kind of guy you'd think would tough this out. Um, he's going to be out six to eight weeks, I believe. So, Zach, what do you think about Mike Trout? Yeah, obviously terrible injury, and he's built like a house, so it's, it's really tough to get him injured. It's just crazy to me that one little, I mean, I don't even really know what this is, a thumb ligament, right? He, he yeah. tore it. That sounds I mean, painful. That can keep you up. Yeah, it can keep you up for six to eight weeks. 
um, is pretty insane. I guess, you know, in baseball that <laughs> your thumb's really important to gripping the bat pretty and using important, the yeah. and throwing. So it makes sense. But yeah, this Angels team, I don't think they'll be able to weather the storm. I think they'll go downhill pretty quickly with him gone. Yeah, I was looking at a stat that was like Mike Trout's OPS is whatever it is, something ridiculously high. And then the team's OPS, like without Trout, is ridiculously low. Um, Trout is the Angels. The Angels, I think last week we had the Panic Meter episode where we had the Angels on it and we both said Panic Meter's not high because they're, if anything, they've been higher than expectations because no one really expected them to be great. Um, now I think Panic Meter is at a 10. If Trout's not going to be around for an extended period of time, something's seriously wrong. So, um, sucks. I wanted to see Mike Trout go for another MVP award. Um, it's funny because this news about Trout comes out the same day as the news about or Harper charging the mound. Um, two absolute, two of baseball's biggest superstars having two very significant days, but in very, very, very different ways. It was, it, it was an interesting day, but again, sucks that Mike Trout's hurt. Um, we're going to call Dr. Tom right now. He's going to tell, tell us a little bit about the uh, Mike Trout injury. This is why we have him on. Perfect situation. Exactly. And we're cold calling him. He doesn't know we're calling. Uh, <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to an... All right, so that was Dr. Tom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very good insight from Dr. Tom. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have him on. Um, really can't get enough of Tom's analysis. He, he's he really, a busy guy. He's a busy guy. I mean, he's got yeah. clients. He's got... You know he's, what? Maybe he's doing the rehab for Mike Trout. We don't what know. What was I thinking? Thinking I could just cold call Tom without an appointment. Dr. Tom, without exactly. an appointment. Yeah. Oh my God! That's Most on you, it. not that's on you, not him. You I should have thought about that. You gotta, exactly. I'll, I guess I'll replace him in this little uh, this little segment. I, I'm going to say Mike Trout having a torn thumb ligament is pretty bad. Um, six to eight weeks seems like a long time to have to be without the best player in baseball. So that's my take. Um, the guy who's coming back, pretty much the opposite of what's happening to Trout right now. David Price for the Boston Red Sox made his season debut returning from an elbow injury that had all of Red Sox nation shitting their pants at the beginning of the year. Suddenly he's back at the end of May. I mean, I thought he was going to be out for the year. If you talked to me a month ago, a month and a half ago, thought he wasn't going to come back. So yeah, David Price season debut, five innings pitched against the Chicago White Sox, three runs, two hits allowed, including a home run to uh, Melky Cabrera hit off of him. I think it was in the third inning. Um, so all in all, I would say it was an encouraging outing. However, um, I mean, you're paying this guy so much money to be an ace. I'm not saying I expected an ace start out of Price right off the bat. That's unrealistic to expect a guy coming off an injury, coming off two very, very terrible uh, rehab starts in AAA to suddenly be back to being the ace in Boston. Um, but I want to see it so sooner rather than later because if he ends up being, you know, three or four caliber guy out of that rotation for an extended period of time. I think, I think you actually have a problem, but all in all, I thought it was an encouraging first start back. Yeah. I mean, think of how low our expectations are for the, like one of the most highest paid pitchers in baseball right now. We're, we're obviously it was his first start back, but we're okay with like five innings from him. Obviously he's going to get lengthened out, but I'm so sick of David price. Like if the Red Sox could get rid of him tomorrow, I want them to, I just don't think it's a good fit here in Boston. He's, He's very sensitive, and I can only imagine if that if that start happened at home and Melky Cabrera hit that home run over the monster. I bet there would have been some boo birds for sure at Fenway. So, hundred um, percent, it'll, yeah. it'll be interesting to see if this festers just because elbow injuries always do. Um, you know, we have Porcello, we have Sale. We just need Price to be decent. Whether he's the two or the three guy, just go out there seven innings, give up three to four runs, keep us in the game. I mean, that's all we really need from him. He's obviously not going to live up to the contract. Everyone kind of knew that when we signed him. But just be, you know, serviceable enough to, to, to be worthy in the top three of the rotation, I think, is what I'm looking for him to do. Yeah, I mean, he's coming back at a pretty solid time. Chris Sale is taking over the ace role. There's no question about that. In the number two spot right now, I mean, it's Eduardo Rodriguez. He's holding that spot very nicely right now. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. Rick Porcello 
outside of those two starts against the Rays, I mean, he's been pretty solid. So, I mean, he hasn't been everything. He hasn't been anything close to a Cy Young winner um, by any means. But I still think Porcello, the best is yet to come this season for Porcello. Uh, and then you got Price and Pom- Pomeranz is not a sure thing. Um, mm-hmm. Brian Johnson just got sent back down to AAA even after his outstanding start uh, at Fenway. Uh, but, yeah, Pomeranz, don't trust him. So, Price, it's good to see that he might be able to fill whatever void there is in this rotation, even if he isn't vintage David Price from, like, years years back when he was a Cy Young candidate. Uh, at least we can get something out of him this year when we when originally we thought we weren't going to get anything at all. So uh, it's definitely definitely good to see. I guess the one, if you're going to play devil's advocate to that point, it was against the Chicago White Sox. I want to see what he does against the top-tier team. That's what I'm waiting to see. Yeah, I need to see him pitch at Fenway in front of the fans because he's kind of had a tumultuous start with the Boston uh, faithful. And to your point, David Price, he when he misses, as you saw when he had the start versus the White Sox, he gives up home runs. Like, that's his MO. Yes. Like, he, he leaves fastballs over the plate or he leaves sliders over the plate, and he doesn't just give up single after single, which Porcello has been doing this year. He's been giving up a ton of hits, but not as many runs because it's been, like, you know, hard hit ground balls and whatnot, but price gives up long balls when he misses. So he really has to kind of nail down his location. Otherwise he gets hit hard because most guys can hit a 93 mile an hour fastball down the middle. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Price. That's the big thing I have big knock I have against him. He just lets up the long ball way too much. If he could avoid that one disastrous inning that he seems to have in every single one of his starts um, due to the long ball, he doesn't let up a lot of hits really. He just lets up a ton of dingers. Um, for runs. So if you can just get rid of that one, one little knock against him, just kind of ease up on letting up that long ball. I, I like, I would like what I see out of price for the rest of the year. If he could do that, um, whether he can do that, it remains to be seen because it hasn't looked like it so far in a Red Sox uniform. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with David price. Uh, I mentioned Eduardo Rodriguez, this guy, I mean, Eduardo, Come on, you got to help help a couple guys out. Help a couple guys out. You followed us on Twitter at Ephus Pod for all of our listeners who don't follow us on Twitter. Eduardo Rodriguez follows us on Twitter when we post a GIF about him or a GIF of him like kicking a soccer ball. Right? That's that's the GIF you posted. Yeah. Yep. Him playing yeah. soccer with Bogarts and uh, Marrero. I think. Yeah. It was. He follows us that night immediately unfollows us. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm not happy about it. So Eduardo Rodriguez, um, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Eduardo. If you're not going to follow us, then you're officially on my shit list. So yeah, I'm a Red Sox fan. I'm an, I'm an Eduardo Rodriguez fan. I like the way he's been pitching so far this year, but you don't follow us back. There's going to be issues. That's all I'm saying. That's not a threat. It's just a promise. Yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't unfollow us when he sees the content we're posting on Twitter. It's pretty yeah. relevant to what his profession is, so I don't get it. But also, yeah, I mean, if we're going to be honest here, Rodriguez, is he jacked enough to have his shirt off playing soccer on the field? I mean, after he scored that goal, he looked pretty doughy. So, I mean, he did look doughy. Yeah, he did look doughy. I, I wouldn't be saying this if he kept if he still follow us, but now that he's not following us, I'd say you need to work on your body. Like, you need to get a summer diet going because he's – He's been pretty pudgy. Uh, Put it this way. As good as Eduardo Rodriguez has been this season, if he doesn't follow us, I'm not saying anything good about him until he does. That's a promise. That he, he You don't want to make an enemy out of me, Eduardo. If you do, this podcast is going to be – I'm going to put the Justin curse on you. That's what I'm going to do. So, Eduardo, better look out. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not threatening. I'm just saying. Yeah, throw us a follow. I mean, it's not like you're committing to something that big. So, I might have to say the same about Trevor Story too, who we also follow and we talk about all the time. Uh, you're repping the Trevor Story T-shirt right here, the Story Time T-shirt. Very, very nice T-shirt. I think I'm gonna have to. We're big Rockies guys. If you're a first time listener for this podcast, big, big Rockies guys. Zach's a huge Trevor Story guy. I think I have to get an Arenado shirt now. Now that you ha- officially have a Trevor Story shirt, I think I have – like, I don't have a choice. I think it's, like, something I have to do. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to have to – we need, like, just T-shirts for each time we record. Just throw a different one out, like, some sort of <laughs> Ephus-related T-shirt. 
I was thinking of wearing this story time shirt every podcast now. And just like, if I wore it outside of the podcast, like out in the world, people would be like, who is story time? No way. No way. It's a fire. That is a fire shirt. Um, I would wear that every single day. So Trevor Story, not going to be on the trading block. I, at least I don't think he would be. But there are a bunch of guys who will be come the deadline. Uh, we got a list of guys here uh, who might be on the trading block. I think trade talks start at the end of May. They last throughout all of June, and then, of course, they really blow up in July because that's where the tread deadline, that's, I mean, it's at the end of that month. So uh, trading block, we have a list. We're going to decide whether they will or won't be traded by the deadline. Um, we're going to start with Josh Donaldson, third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. Zach, do you think he gets traded before the deadline? If you told me, if you, if you asked me this question maybe a week ago, Two weeks ago, I would have said there's a chance just because of the way the Blue Jays were trending. But right. they've won uh, – they're 7-3 and three in their last 10, and they're trending the right direction. Donaldson obviously is just returning from an injury. So I don't think he'll get traded because I think the Blue Jays are playing better and they're going to make a run for that second wild card based around this team they have. Unless they decide to rebuild, then they will trade him. But I don't see him getting traded at the deadline. Yep, I agree. Um, I think if you ask me this, around that time they were on that skid. I think it was to start the year, so probably halfway, halfway through April, end of April. If you asked me, I probably would have said yes. He's going to be traded definitely, but I'm going to go with no. I don't. I don't see it happen. They're only six and a half games out of the AL East. Never mind the wild card. So um, didn't really see that coming at the beginning of the year, but that's the deal right now. So no, I don't. I can't see them trading him at the deadline unless something crazy happens and they they really really suck from here on uh d gordon miami marlins second baseman uh this is a tough one just because he's so young and has a lot of potential um i'm gonna go with yes though just because it's so tough to find a decent offensive second baseman and not that he's a power guy but he's a good on base guy he's a good leadoff hitter he can steal bags he plays a great second base so i think some team will sort of empty their pocketbook and give the Marlins what they want because the Marlins are going nowhere fast. I think everyone can agree on that. So why not try to get some pitching um, for a player that may not fit into your long-term plans? Yep, Marlins are 11 and a half games back in the NL East, fourth place, absolutely terrible this season. ton of talent on that team, including Gordon. I think you got to make a move. Um, I, I, I see him getting traded before the deadline. D Gordon's a big enough name still, despite the steroid stuff, despite all that. Um, his reputation is still intact, at least in my eyes. So I think you can get some pretty solid talent, maybe some good prospects uh, for D Gordon. So if you're the Marlins, if you get a decent deal for D Gordon, which I think you would, I think you have to pull the trigger. Um, Mike Moustakis, third baseman, Kansas City Royals. Yeah, I think Moustakis is going to get traded. Um, obviously, he's one of the guys that's up at the end of this year. So they really have to make a decision on who they want to keep and who they want to ship out. And it really depends on, you know, if they think they have a chance to make the playoffs this year, they currently sit in last place. They've been playing yeah. terribly. So I think Kansas city will be a big seller at the deadline. So I don't see why they would keep Moustakis. I think he gets traded for sure. He's having a decent year too. Yeah. Moustakis playing really well. Um, he's probably been the number one name that I've heard uh, when it comes to trade talks so far this season. I hear his name. If there's trade talks, Moustakas is right at the center of it. I'll take it a step further. I think if he gets moved, he goes to either the Giants or the Red Sox. Those are the two teams I'd say are most likely to make a move for someone like Moustakas. Really in need, it seems, as of right this moment, of a uh, third baseman, a guy who can both play the field and hit some bombs uh, at third base. Like I said, he's having a great year offensively. So uh, Moustakas, I see him getting moved. A guy who I don't think is as good as Moustakis, but is also he's a third baseman who's also been in the center of trade talks already is Todd Frazier. Uh, Todd Frazier, third baseman for the Chicago White Sox. Do you see him getting moved? Yeah, I always say Tim Frazier. So Todd Tim Frazier. Frazier. <laughs> Todd Frazier. I um, need a Tim Frazier. Sure. I don't know where to find that. Tim but. Frazier. Um, <laughs> they've actually been playing well, the White Sox. Um Frazier has not been playing well, though. I mean, I watched the game, uh, the price start, and he is lost at the dish. Like, he can't – he has no idea where the strike zone is. He's He just seems like he's washed up, and he's still decently in his prime, so I'm not sure what's going on with him. If the White Sox are willing to part with him for, like, 
a fucking washing machine, yeah, I think they could <laughs> trade him. But I just don't – there's definitely a market for a third baseman, but he's not having a good year. So if they're willing to part for him for something low, yeah, I, I'd say he gets traded, but I'm just not sure. There's better options out there. Like you said, Moustakis. Uh, D. Gordon could play third. I mean, that's for sure. So why there's a lot of other options that you could get better players. I think he's going to get moved. I think he's a big enough name. I don't know if he's a big enough talent to bring back a lot of players. At least if I'm the GM, I'm not trading for Todd Frazier. Um, that's not the kind of guy I want on my team. Um, and if Todd Frazier is a free agent right now, he's not getting a lot. I mean, we saw already power bats like Bautista, Trumbo, those guys. Those guys have a tough time getting deals. So Todd Frazier would be the same situation. I don't know if there's really a market for him right now. Um, but that being said, at the deadline, a lot, there's a lot of buyers, a lot of guys who are desperate for bats in the middle of their lineup. So, yeah, I'm going to say Frazier gets moved. Um, I'm going to go next with three other White Sox players that while we're at it because they're going to be sellers for sure at the deadline. Uh, Jose Quintana, who we already kind of went over, David Robertson, and Jose Abreu. Um, we won't go too far into these ones. Just name yes, no, like whether you think they're going to get moved. I think Quintana will get moved. I think they'll keep Abreu, and I think they'll keep Robertson. I'm not I'm not so sure the White Sox are going to be sellers yet, just the way they've been playing. I don't know how they're winning games, but they are. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the um, standings here, and they're two and a half games out um, of a wild card spot, three and a half games out of the division, and Minnesota's at the top of the division, so they'll definitely come back to her. So if the White Sox want to make a run and, and try to win this year, uh, they can, but, you know, they're, they're probably not going to resign these guys, so they may want to trade. So I think to answer your question, Quintana gets traded because um, starting pitching is always at a premium. I think they keep Robertson and Abreu. Okay. I said no last week to Quintana, so I'm going to stick with that opinion there. I don't think Quintana is going to get moved. I think their asking price is going to be extremely high. Um, I can see maybe if he's moved, I can see a team like maybe the Astros uh, looking for for Quintana. Um, they're going to really – they're the best team in baseball right now probably. I can see them if they're headed towards the postseason. They need, they're need they going to be like, oh, we need one more uh, really big arm in that rotation uh, behind Keiko, behind like guys like McCullers. Um, so, yeah, I, I could see that happening, but I'm going to go with no there just because, like I said, the asking price is going to be very high. Robertson, I, I say yes. Um, they were trying to shop him all winter long and couldn't find the, the right deal. So I'm going to go yes because I think at the deadline, again, desperation is much higher at the deadline. So I think this time uh, they'll find some sort of deal there. And I agree with you, no, Jose Abreu, I don't think he's going to be moved. He's playing way too well right now. He's the centerpiece uh, of this organization. Uh, totally so agree. we will move on to Zach Grinke, starting pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, I don't think Granky gets moved just because the D backs have been playing so well. If if they were if they were having a season like they were last year, I think he'd definitely get moved um, just based on them rebuilding and they don't really need an ace if you're rebuilding. So right now they're they're giving it a shot. I mean, they're tied for the wild card uh, in the NL, so why not keep Granky and try to ride this out with the roster they have? Yeah, I guess like it's kind of a cop out to just be like, Oh yeah, if they're contenders, no, they won't trade Granky. But if they're out then yeah, they will. Like, but so as of right now, I'm gonna go no. Um, Zach Granke, I don't think he gets moved. He's playing way too well. The Diamondbacks are playing way too well. Um, like, like I said, I hate being that guy who's like, oh well, if everything falls apart, yeah, they'll get rid of Granke. But I think that's the way to look at it. That's exactly how it's gonna go. So as of now, I'm gonna go no. Granke doesn't get moved. Uh, Sonny Gray, starting pitcher for the Oakland A's, a guy who's been at the center of trade talks for it seems like years now. Uh, so what do you think? Does he get moved by the deadline? Uh, I think he does get moved. Um, I think the athletics are going nowhere fast. And he's been pitching decent lately. I mean, he's pitching tonight, and he's actually getting shelled by the Indians, which is no surprise because their offense yep. is unreal. But I think people are looking for arms. And he has that name recognition, like you said, um, with right. Quintana. So I think Gray does get moved. And I don't think you'll have to give up a ton for him just because – scouts will know that he's not the pitcher he once was. Um, so that no one will get fleeced over by the A's. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yes. He gets moved. Um, he, before tonight, he had a couple really good starts, really encouraging starts. Uh, he's returning from an injury, all that. So, I mean, there is, there are red flags there. Um, he hasn't been the pitcher he once was for a while now. Uh, I still think he gets moved. The A's are going to be moving. I think a couple big name players, uh, another one is Yonder Alonso, who 
has been playing out of his mind so far this year. Something no one really expe- expected to happen. Um, but Yonder Alonso, big power bat in that A's lineup, it turns out. Uh, I Do you think he gets moved at the deadline? Uh, I think he doesn't get moved just because unless a team has a, a, a vacancy at first base, he can't really play any other position. I mean, he can't yeah. play corner outfield. He's not athletic enough. He would be the perfect DH on a team, a contending team. So maybe if the uh, – I don't think they'd trade in the division, but maybe if the Angels needed another big bat because their offense is slunking, sl- slumping, they could trade a pitcher for uh, – for yonder alonzo i i just don't know where he'd go i just don't see a good map right. there so i don't think he gets traded agree with you don't think he gets moved for pretty much the same reasons um so we'll move on to our last two both detroit tigers players miguel cabrera who you threw on this list i thought that was a little surprising and then victor martinez um i'll start with this one just because i want to go off miguel cabrera uh, first, I just want to ask, what made you put Cabrera on? Just because you think the Tigers are going to be big time sellers? Yeah, I, I think they're they're realizing their their time with these players is over, and if they can get something, why not get something for them now? Right. Um, and I I feel like Victor Martinez is a little easier to move than Miguel Cabrera just based on their contracts. And yeah. both players, I mean, if they get traded now, they both have to be DHs. I mean, they could both kind of play for a space, but. So th- their market is only the American League, and if Detroit wants to to sell the guys, that could definitely help a team. And the I, I picture I picture Victor Martinez in the way I picture the teams that are shot that were like trying to acquire Carlos Beltran. You get that lefty bat who's reliable in the playoffs, um, a good average hitter. So I think Martinez gets moved. I'm not so sure Cabrera gets moved because that would take a hell of a pull. He's not having a great season, so they wouldn't be exactly selling high on him. So maybe he is available just because there may be a little decline there. So that's why I put him on the list. I think Martinez definitely gets traded, but I think they keep Cabrera just because he's kind of the face of their franchise at this point. So I think, honestly, well, I don't think Cabrera gets moved. I as much, I mean, he's a big name, so maybe they shop him around for a ton of prospects and maybe a team bites. I think the real Martinez that's going to get moved, I don't think Victor is going to get moved. If I had to pick the other Martinez, J.D. Martinez, I think that's the guy. That's the guy that Detroit's going to want to move is J.D., uh, not Victor. That's who I would have. Um, we didn't include him on this list originally, but if I had to pick one guy out of those three to get shopped, it's probably J.D. Martinez. Um, another power guy, outfielder. He's not, I mean, he's not the best outfielder defensively, that's for sure, but he's going to hit you a ton of home runs, going to drive in a ton of runs. And again, like at the deadline, there seems like there's more of a market for that is in the winter. So, yeah, I, I would say that's the guy I would expect to get moved out of those three. I don't know what you think about J.D. Martinez. Do you think he gets moved? Uh, I think he could. I'm just I, – I don't know if they see him as like they sort of clear the way for him if they get rid of Cabrera or Martinez. Like he's True. hitting six in their lineup, and it's – there's the, the Tigers have been hitting Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez three, four in their lineup for like six years. I mean, they've been to World Series, but I think it's time for a change. Maybe let Castellanos, uh, you know, hit in that spot. Let J.D. Martinez, you know, let some of these young guys come up. Jacoby Jones, who's been on the rise. So I, I just I just almost feel like Tigers fans are ready for a reboot there and ready for some fresh blood to come up. I actually got one more for you. Justin Upton sticking with the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, I mean, he's, I feel like he's talked about the deadline every year, so yeah. I could definitely see him leaving just because Tigers have outfielders ready to come up. Uh, they sort of had a surplus there, so why not, again, that power bat we talked about, that could help a team out in the playoffs. Yep, I agree. Justin Upton, I don't think he's going to be in a Tigers uniform much longer. Uh, we will move on from that on to what we do every single week, dud of the week. Uh, Zach, who's your dud this this week? Um, I'm actually scared to call this guy a dud because I'm legitimately scared of him. Uh, so I'm going to whisper it. Crush Davis. Uh Oh, Uh Oh yeah. You're done. This guy is having one of the worst MLB batting seasons. I think ever. I mean, he leads the league. That tends to happen to him. He'll hit like 50 in one year with like a 280 batting average. And the next year hit, barely above the Mendoza line with like 25 homers. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got 76 strikeouts. On the, I think he's on pace to have the most strikeout, like shatter the strikeout record in a season. 
I was watching some of the game over the weekend. His swings, he's always at a lazy swing, but he looks like he just is checked out and doesn't care, um, which is – he always kind of looks like that. But he's hitting yeah. .087 in his past uh, seven days. So I think Not Chris, great. I think Chris Davis is a dud. It, it's, it's pretty scary to say that just because he's probably – the last guy you want to fight in major league baseball or say something bad about, he looks like yeah. a bouncer at a nightclub. So, <laughs> but he needs to figure out the play. Cause I think the Orioles could make a deal and replace it. Like if he doesn't, oh, yeah. he's hurting them, not helping them at this point. Right. Um, who do you think <laughs> this is kind of a joke, but who do you think finishes with more strikeouts at the end of the season, Chris sale or Chris Davis? So what is sale at now? Like now he's got like a hundred, hundred. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I it's definitely Sale, but if Sale's facing <laughs> Chris Davis, I mean that could help him. If there's a lot of yeah. oil, he could get four in a game. Why not? Yeah, I just thought that was funny because I just it just popped in my head when you said seventy something strikeouts for Chris Davis. I mean that's a high fucking number right now already. So yeah. to have that go up against Chris Sale's one hundred, which is a crazy pace right now, anyways for a pitcher. Maybe Chris Sale slows down. Chris Davis speeds up. That starts being a little a good little competition there, a good little bet. Um, but, yeah, I would take Sale still. My dud is Odubel Herrera. So this guy, I yep. thought he had a lot of potential uh, playing in Philadelphia, kind of the one bright spot in that team. right? Or Last year, at least, that was the case. He had a game this week where he went 0 for 5 with five strikeouts. I know we have like the golden sombrero and all that shit. I don't. Is there a thing for zero for five with five strikeouts? I don't even think there's a name for that. It's so no, bad. I don't know if there is either. So he's my dud for that reason. He's been a dud all year, but to have that game on top of it is the icing on the cake, uh, in my opinion. So yeah, Od Odubo Herrera is mine. He he has like one of the worst stances I've ever seen in baseball. Terrible. Like he is painful. He, it's like worse than Tony Batista. He's like all discombobulated. It's like no shit you can't hit the ball. You have to like unwind your body to even yeah. swing. It doesn't make any sense. Like you would think physics would prevent him from ma ever making contact with the ball. It doesn't make – it's ridiculous. Um, so we'll move on from that to don't call it a comeback. Um, my don't call it a comeback this week is Jose Barrios of the Minnesota Twins. Um, he's 3-0 this season. 166 ERA, 55, 0.55 whip. Uh, the reason he's my don't call it a comeback is because this guy, when he first started out in the big leagues, he's he's one of Minnesota's biggest uh, prospects. Huge potential out of this guy. When he first started in the majors, there was a lot, a lot of hype surrounding him. So he starts in the majors and was terrible. He was wild. I think his ERA was upwards of eight. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, so needless to say, he was sent back to AAA. Um, he came back up a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and he's been a stud ever since. 3-0, like I said, 1-6-6 ERA, 55, .55 whip. So that curveball, by the way, or whatever, that breaking ball from Barrios looks like someone throwing a whiff ball. It's insane. So yeah. I think we have the clip on the EFIS somewhere, at EFIS Pod on Twitter. Um, so you guys can check that out there. But, yeah, it's absolutely ri ri ridiculous what Barrios has done so far. Yeah, it's it's just like a wiffle ball, like he said. Like his, I don't even know. Would you call it a slurve or just like? Yeah, I've seen less movement out of a wiffle ball pitch than his. Yeah, his, no, yeah, I can't throw a wiffle ball like that. It's that's insane. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it if his arm holds up. I'm sure he's just like cranking his elbow when he throws. That. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I don't know how he couldn't be. Yeah. So my uh, my don't call it a comeback. Um, I sort of based it on the month they're having. I mean. This guy's a stud. Um, you know, he's kind of lauded the next great shortstop, Carlos Correa, but he was strugg right. struggling to start this month. He was hitting 226 in the beginning of the May. And, you know, now it stands the end of May's on Thursday. He's now hitting 311. So that's an unreal. Great sort of band. Month. Yeah. <laughs> 311. That's an unreal month from him. And even in this last seven days, um, he's hitting 571. So. You know, it's good to see a young guy like that. When they struggle, they sort of get down on themselves, and they, they try to do all this weird stuff to help figure it out. But he really stayed on track, trusted his swing, and he's improved his average almost 100 points in a month, which is is pretty tough to do uh, day in and day out, you know, hitting. So, yeah, Carlos that's a good pick. Carlos Correa is an absolute stud. I, I, I would never be worried about a guy with that kind of talent, but that's a good pick for don't call it a comeback. 
uh, look out. I mean, if Correa, if all these guys start firing all cylinders at the same exact time, this Astros team is virtually unbeatable. I mean, it's insane how much talent is on this Astros squad. So look out for Correa. Look out for the Astros. They're hot. And another pe person is hot. We're going to get to two other people who are hot right now with our when you're hot, you're hot segment. Um, I'll let you go first for this one. Yeah, so everyone knows we're big Rockies guys at this point. So this guy is like a legit MVP candidate to me, and I don't care what anyone says, Charlie Blackman. Yeah, I that mean, was my pick. So I guess we I have mean, one guy from this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's all we need. We're both Rockies guys. Let's both yep. just spend five minutes talking about Charlie Blackman. This I know, guy I'm is down for that. He plays an Unreal D in center. Um, he he just – every time I see the Rockies games, they're just, he's just getting hits. Like, he's just driving in runs. He's scoring. He's stealing bags. Like, he's just – he's a true five-tool player. He looks like a fucking back, backwoods, like, moonshine maker. Yeah. So, like, no one really takes him seriously because he's that fun guy. But, I mean, in the last seven days, he's hitting 379, four dingers, ten ribbies. His numbers are up there with, like, the NL MVP candidate. So I think you have to start throwing his name in that conversation. I know there's a lot of good uh, players on the Rockies. You know, you got Arenado, you got Story, you got Cargo. But I think the guy that's really carrying them so far has been Blackman. No, yeah, Blackman, in my mind, has stolen the spotlight in Colorado for now from Arenado. Arenado was the – he's still a superstar, Arenado, but Blackman – is a superstar in his own right, at least so far this season. So if he keeps this up, I, I mean, I don't see how you can say he's not an MVP candidate. Um, there's a lot of talent in the National League, but I would say so far this year, the NL MVP race is wide open and Charlie Blackman's knocking on the door right now. So he's definitely, he's both of our picks for when you're hot, you're hot this week. If I can have an honorable mention, since we both have the same one, uh, I'm going to go Jake Marisnik, another Astro. So Jake Marisnik, Probably out of everyone on that team, the one he's the one guy who's just not a household name at all, but he's turning into one. I mean, he's a great, great outfielder uh, defensively, outstanding arm. We saw him make multiple game-saving uh, throws. And then his bat, I mean, it's been pretty solid. He's batting 280 with, I think, six homers. So if, if he can keep that pace up, he has a, he has a firm spot in this Astros lineup um, and can really help this team come postseason time, another another extra weapon uh, for Houston this year. Yeah, Marisnik, he plays great defense, too. Like, he makes yeah. great diving catch. And, like, he's hit a couple home runs this year that were tape measure shots. Like, yep. absolutely leaned on them, like, 460-plus over the train tracks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Astros are loaded. I mean, they scored oh, yeah. 10 runs the other – in an inning the other day versus the Twins, which is, like – I was I, gonna say that's that's I, another I, don't call it a comeback right there. Is that comeback against the Twins? Yeah, uh, Springer came up and they went into a rain delay and then they uh, sort of came back and then they just put up a ten spot like it was nothing. I mean, I think I could get that lineup out in like ten, <laughs> ten before them scoring ten runs. So I mean, the <laughs> Twins, I don't know how they're winning right now, but that's a conversation for another day. That AL Central is weird, man. I don't, I can't. I, it's an enigma to me between them and the White Sox having success right now. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, I think that wraps up this week. I ended up having some sort of good topics, I guess, uh, given the fact it was a dead week. So, um, with on that note, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Ephus Pod. Uh, as I always say, we post a lot of video content on there along with our podcasts some funny stuff. So check that out. And then uh, like us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes. I say this every week as well. Leave a nice review. Um, we'll recite all the funny five-star reviews on the podcast, give you a little shout out. So do that. Um, and yeah, Zach, unless you got anything else, I think we'll wrap it up there. No, I hope that, I hope this Harper fight sort of inspire some more fights to happen over the next couple of weeks. I know. Well, like we said, end of May, shit's starting to heat up. So, uh, well, we should have, maybe not in the next week, but in the coming couple months, I think we're going to see some fireworks not outside of just Harper and Strickland. So, uh, yeah, on that note, we will see you guys later.